All right, now that we're trading shots, we need some sort of fiery death. Because what game would be complete without fiery death? All right, so we've got our guy. I think what we're going to do is we're going to implement the enemy's death first, and then we'll figure out what to do about player death last or next. Because I think ultimately what we want to do is make a lot of these guys pouring over the hills and maybe give our turret a lot more hit points or maybe make these guys much fewer hit points. Um, right now they're on even footing, so they each start off with 100 hit points and they just beat on each other until one of them dies. All right, so we have our hit point system in place. If we go look at our code, we have this hole right here that basically says um, if they're below zero on their hit points, then, then they should die. And the trick to this, I think, really is how to make this generic. So we can't really do something like trigger an animation or something like that unless we're sure that an animation clip with the same name or a mechanum state exists on everything. And that, that's not a fair assumption because we've got all these mechanum states on the enemy, but we don't have any mechanum states on our turret. We don't need any. So what to do? Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and trigger a function or a, rather a method that is in a script on whatever we're hitting. So there's a little bit of work to do. We can do this really quickly and easily and then we can go back and make it a lot more object oriented and a lot cleaner by forcing requirements to be on objects. And so we'll look at that. But I, as I always say, the first thing I always want to do is get it working and then go back and refactor and make it nice. So let's just start with making it work. So what we're going to do on our bad guy is when he reaches his death point, um, then we're going to actually play the death animation and we'll probably do something fun like some sort of explosion or smoke or something a little bit more dramatic. So that'll be fun. So let's figure out how to make all that happen. So we've got our warrior and if you recall if we go look at the animator for this guy we have a death state here and all we have to really have to do is set this is dead variable to true so just to remind ourselves of what that looks like let's just look at that for a minute when he comes into view we'll kill him off so here he comes, we'll wait till he gets good and close, and then we'll click the old is dead button. And he should... Ah. Now it looks like that's looping, which is not what we'd want, and we really don't want him to keep firing. Um, that's because we have this set to any state, He can, meaning he can die from any state. And maybe that's not what we want. Maybe we want him to die from the default state. But that's okay. Um, I think the biggest thing to fix is the the whole is looping thing. And then, of course, we don't want him to be able to fire as soon as he's dead. So let's just pick these off one by one. Let's go back to the warrior controller script. And why don't we go ahead and make this variable up top so that we can track whether or not he's dead very easily. Let's do a private. Do we want to make it private or should we make it public? Yeah, my first instinct is to make it private um, because really it should be an internal state, not an external state. So internal Boolean, you can always change it later, is dead. Okay, and in start, we'll initialize that to false. Okay, good. And now in our hit point system, and now that I'm thinking about it, this may actually be better in the hit point system rather than in the generic controller. So why don't we move it? I did not think about that. Okay, let me clean this up because I've got a lot of blank lines here. 
There we go. Okay, let's go over to the hit point system. This is nicer because it'll be in one place. All right. So we'll put it here. And we'll initialize it to false. Good. And down here, we will change this to true. And now, how does that help us? How does that help us actually cause him to stop firing? So let's switch back over to our warrior controller script. And I think what we're going to do is create a reference to hit point system so that this script can see what's going on in the hit point system. So that's pretty easy. Let's do private. And let's do, what's the name of our object again? Hit point system, hit point system. Perfect. Okay. And then over here, let's add a git components. Like that. Now this is unusual for us, right? Usually we don't do this. We usually do something like animator or nav mesh, uh, but it, hit point system is a script. It's an object just like anything else. So you can get it just like any other object. And so now we have an access point to the hit point system, which is great. The problem that you run into is you really want to force Unity to look for that script and make sure it's there because if we have a hit point system, then this is just flat out not going to work, is it? So let's go ahead and show you a way that you can require a component. So to do this, we're in Warrior Controller Script. I'm going to scroll up to the top, and I'm going to add a decorator up here. And the decorator is require component, just like that. And then it takes an argument, which is type of and then the name of the type that you want to require. So in this case, we were requiring hit point system. Like that. And type of requires, it's also a function. So I need to put this in parenthesis. That's why it's mad. Okay, perfect. Now, I want to show you what this does. This is actually kind of cool. I'm going to switch back over to Unity. This is purely demonstration. You don't need to do this. Just watch. I'm going to come over to Unity. I'm going to go into my scene view. And I'm going to add an object. It doesn't matter what, because I'm just going to show you something really quick. I'm going to slap a cube in there somewhere. And we'll move it over here a little bit so that it's not on top of anything. Fine, that's good. Now, I'm going to take the controller that we just made, the warrior controller script where we just added that code. And I'm gonna drag it and drop it on here. And what you're gonna see is a hit point system automatically added to this new object. So when I drag and drop this, it got the warrior controller script, but it also automatically added the hit point system. And so this is a way that you can add requirements into your script. So there are probably some other things that we really need in here. So let's go back. Let me get rid of this since it was just a demonstration. Okay, that's gone. Let's go back into Visual Studio and let's see what else we need in here. So we're definitely assuming that this has an animator on it. We're definitely assuming it has a nav mesh agent on it. We're also assuming that it has a collider and a rigid body on it. And so really, we should put all of those things on here but I'm not going to right now because that's not really what we're trying to solve. So why don't we put a to-do on here? So that we remember to come back and do it later. In Visual Studio, you have this active task list down here and it will show you all of the to-do items that are in your code. 
Just make sure that the to-do items that you're looking at are yours and not Unity's. But usually Visual Studio is pretty good about only showing the ones that you created versus ones that are in other people's libraries. All right, so we'll come back and do that later. That's definitely a refactor task. Our task at hand is going to be to find a way to cause this sort of generic death reaction. So we've got our reference to our hit point system. And so what we'll do, I think, is we'll create a method in here called death. I'm going to roll some of these up because I've got a lot of stuff down here at the bottom. And usually I'm really good about showing you that's a, definitely a survival trick in Unity. Um, I have this neat tool that I've talked about before called ReSharper, uh, but you don't have that. So one of the things that it does is when I select the closing brace, it will show me what the opening brace is. And that's really neat. So if I want to add something to the end of this class, I need to know where the actual end of the class is. So if I select this, I can see that that's closing late update. This one is closing the class. And so if I want to add a new method, I should do it right here. So the survival trick in Unity is that the last brace is always the class, and the second to last brace is always the last, the last method that you're closing up. That's different because usually when you're working in plain, ordinary C Sharp, there's a third set there for the namespace, but we don't use namespaces in Unity work, at least not directly. All right, so let's add... something called private void die for now. And now there's two ways to, to think about this. How do we want to trigger die? Well, we went to the, the trouble of putting this hit point reference on here. And so one thing that we might do is, because we really want to do all the uh, stop shooting and all of that, um, we can constantly observe or monitor hit points to make sure it, when it drops to, to zero that we do something with it. Or we can send a signal. And I'm not sure that one was better than the other. The, the real object-oriented way would be to send a signal up, I think. But I don't know that I'm, I feel strongly enough to tell you that that's the right way to do it and that's how you should do it. So let's go with my first gut instinct, which is... Um, to observe hit points and see, you know, once we hit that that threshold, then we're going to do something. So I think for that, I'm going to go back to the good old update method that we sort of superimposed late update on. And since we have that reference, we're going to say if hit points dot current hit points is less than or equal to zero, then what? Okay, die is obvious, but there was other stuff that we wanted to do. So let's make sure that our animator is turned off. Um, let's make sure that we, probably the smart thing to do here is gonna be to transition into the walking state or the idle state and then instantly kill the guy. That way we have a solid basis for all of our animations and we don't have these weird animation jumps. So I think I'm gonna move towards that direction. So I'm really just gonna sort of backtrace all the things that I've done. So agent.stop, just in case he's walking, why don't we set agent.stop in there? And then animator.setfloat speed to zero. That sounds like an excellent idea too, so let's do that. And then we've got the is firing thing. Um, how does that work? The next shot is computed. So why don't we look at how this works? So we've got and next fire time. I really hate to do three of these, but we're going to. Um, we're gonna make sure that he can fire and so in a state where he can fire, um, it's whether or not he's dead. So how do we determine that? So I think we started, oh, we have it, right? It's in, 
it's in our hit points thing because we moved it. So we can say hit points is dead would give us that information. So let's do that. So we'll say and and hit points is dead. I thought we put it in there. Let me go look. Hit point system. Oh, we didn't make it public, right? We made it private. So why don't we make this public since it now seems like it's useful. And now we should refactor this. And we'll rename it just is dead. But I think probably we should probably make that read only. I think we can get away with just typing read only here. Except it doesn't want us to set it if we do that. Hmm. Okay, we'll leave it out for now. Again, more important to get it working than to make it OOP perfect. We can do that later. Okay, is dead. And actually we want to target the not is dead. So let's put an exclamation point in front of this. So now we're saying if he's in range and it's time to fire and he's not dead, then he'll actually fire. Otherwise he's not gonna fire and he's not gonna do all the rest of this stuff. So that's all good. And so now we can do whatever it is that die does. And I guess really we can move all this stuff down to die and it would probably make a lot more sense. So let's do that. I'm gonna cut that out and let's move down to die and put it in there. And now it's sort of in one place. The other thing we want him to do is we want to transition him into our death rattle, our death thing, whatever it is that he does, and I don't remember. So let me look back over here and go into animator. And I think we're gonna rewire this a little bit. But the thing that we're gonna set is, is dead. We're gonna set that to true. So let's do that. And we'll worry about what it looks like afterwards. We'll say animator.setBool is dead and we'll set that equal to true okay we'll put it to do in here something like explode in fiery smoke awesome and then eventually destroy the object All right, so let's see how this looks. So we'll play it out. And maybe for testing, you might want to drop his hit points down so that you don't have to play the game all the way through. Are you starting to see why cheat codes exist? Okay. Boom. Uh-oh. Oh, he really should be dead. Okay, I'm going to pause it for a minute and let's give it a think. Okay, I've given it about 30 seconds worth of thought and I don't know why it isn't, so let's trace it out together. So I'm going to turn all this off. I am going to set the bad guy's hit points to 10. 
to make it a little easier to kill him. And what else can I do? Let's go into our code and find our hit point system. And let's put a breakpoint right there. And let's attach. OK. Actually, I'll go ahead and put a hit point right there. That way, I'll hit either way. Just in case it's not making it to that point in the if statement. Though it should be. Okay, it should be one shot and he should be dead. And it hits. And let's see. New hit points is, oh, that's weird. It must have reset it. It must have, yeah, it initializes to, to that. All right. So we'll let it go. Oh, well, that's weird. Now he's dead. <laughs> OK, what was it before? That's pretty strange. We might have to figure that out. But that's what we wanted to see. Is dead is true. And he's walking entirely too much for a dead thing. So something happened because he's not doing the same thing he was doing. But he's definitely not dying either. See, he's continuing to walk. So part of our code worked. Our co the part of our code that worked definitely is the warrior controller where he can only fire if he's not dead. But it thinks he's dead. And did it ever actually make it here, which is the other interesting thing. All right, so let's run it again. I'll switch back over here to Unity, run it again. comes boom I think I'm seeing the both of them here is what I'm really seeing well no can fired yet so it's 90 and then we let it go and then it comes through again for whatever reason and now he's dead and hopefully it will stop on the other one is dead is true okay let's go over here and inspect and see if is dead really is true We should be able to say, oh, see, it's not. All right. So I'll hit continue. And I'll bring Unity back up again. And there he is. And what happens if we just, oh, he is dead, see? Huh, strange. Okay, so he's very confused. I'm not sure why. Let's think about this for a minute. Let me pause while I think. So the thing I haven't seen yet is this right here. And I usually avoid hitting that because it's gonna trigger constantly, right? It's gonna trigger 60 times a second. So that's usually not a useful breakpoint. Oh. Okay, if it's less than or equal to Z, okay. Um, really, it would probably be better if I don't do it that way, if I say is dead. Right? That's probably smarter. 
All right, let's try it one more time and see if that makes a difference. Either way, we've got a breakpoint now there, so we should be able to see. There we go. Okay, so really the only problem at this point is that it's looping. So we didn't have a good connection in there for whatever reason, but that's fixed it. So now he's doing this funny little dance, which is kind of zing, but also easy to fix, right? So let's go uh, in here into animator and let's take a look at his death clip for a moment and see Actually, we need to go into the warrior itself, right? And check the actual clip. So I'm going to do a search on PA warrior. And let's look at his death clip. There's backwards, collapse, death clip. It's literally called death clip. That's kind of nice. Double click. Oh, that doesn't work, does it? We have to go in here and find it in here. That's intuitive, right? You'd think that it would. Okay, so let's see if, oh, and loop time is not set, so that's strange. So that means that it's transitioning in and out of that state rather than looping it. So I was expecting this to be checked. Oh, that's for the left clip. Let's find the right one. Death, okay, still isn't checked. So that's what we would expect where he just falls down and dies. All right, so this is going into the state and it's a state problem. So let's do this, let's get rid of this. Uh, just click it and delete, hit delete. And now how do we get to delete? So he has to be in default, how's that? Make transition. Oh, it seems like he's doing some other stuff too. So let's do this. And we've got our overlap problem, which we can fix just by adjusting this ever so slightly until it goes away. We'll go from the default state into death. If is dead is true. And then he'll exit. Oh, make sure I actually want that one checked. He'll exit when he's played all the way through. And then hopefully that'll be it. I would kind of expect him to stay in that state because there's no way out of it. So let's see if that does it. Um, one more thing I want to look at. Let me see. Okay. That all looks okay to me. So let's see if this makes a difference. So I don't really have to wait on him this time. I can just find him in the scene and kill him off in the animator. Oh, I have to set his speed equal to zero first. And that's perfect. So you saw what happened. I killed him in here and he transitioned into state and I can see him over here. And so he literally just falls down. So we are in good shape. And we're right at the 30 minute mark and that's usually how long I like to go. So in the next video, we'll add some effects.